So thank you so much for the nice presentation. And thank you also to Ignacio and Silke for the invitation. And it's an honor for me to be the co-panelist with Jennifer Gravisov. Really happy to be here. I will start by referring to the idea of internet as a network of networks and the powerful discourses about connectivity due to the increasing importance of internet in almost all aspects in our lives. Yet, in our connected world, we are con confronted with a paradox, the paradox of connectivity. There is more information available, but we appear to be more confused. Is this uh, fake news? Is this real? Where is this information coming from? And we are connected to people all over the world, but we are disconnected from our local realities, from ourselves, from our bodies. At times, connectivity makes us forget that this network depends on physical spaces and changing infrastructures that impact communities and that can have high environmental costs. Today, we will discuss this tension between connection and disconnection. To do so, I would like to refer to the image you see in the screen behind me. This is a photo of an artwork that the Argentinian artist Tomás Seraceno exhibited at the 53rd Biennale di Venezia of 2009 which was inspired by Latour's work on networks, societies, and spheres. I will refer to the network not as an organization, but as Latour expresses, as a mode of inquiry, almost like a method or a way in which what is invisible becomes visible. When discussing connection and disconnection, I will explore internet as a material network that is very much connected to territories that we inhabit. Cables, infrastructures, computers, mobile phones, data centers, materials of devices, territories, minerals, but also our bodies. As Latour claims, the greater the, the digital expansion, the greater the materiality. There has been a discussion about critical perspectives of internet connectivity under the term of digital capitalism. In particular, the accumulation of power from big tech companies such as Google, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and more and the social issues that digital capitalism is causing in the following three dimensions. The platform economy. The workers of these platforms that have no social security, that face discriminatory practices and precarity, but also the workers that are exposed to violence in platforms without psychological assistance. Another dimension is the algorithmic governance and data extractivism that causes also racism, sexism, digital violence, and oppression. And also how our interactions in the ne network and being reduced to data and then capitalized. How there is no accountability from big tech companies on these issues. Another dimension is the surveillance capitalism, a concept that was coined by uh, Soshana Tsubov, and, and that there is a constant monitoring and surveillance, not only from governments, but from companies to gain control and profit with our data. Facebook and Amazon have more information about me than myself. And there is an increasing corporate control and disputes over data between different actors. However, discussions about digital capitalism have evolved. Authors such as Nick Coldry and Ulysses Mejia have proposed the term data colonialism. In their 2018 book, The Coast of Connection, 
how data is colonized in human life and appropriated for capitalism. In this concept, they refer to the exploitation of human life. And this is through the appropriation of data that can be extracted for profit. They claim that a social life that can be tracked, captured, classified, and accounted for as economic value produces subjects that are colonized and dispossessed. Another important contribution in this direction is a uh, Safiya Novo, uh, 2018 book, Algorithms of Operation, How Search Engines Reinforce Racism. A feminist scholar, Noble argues that algorithms oppress women and promote both racism and sexism. Along with other feminist scholars, Noble provides evidence of the digital violence on bodies. Feminists from the South have argued that one of the expression of the cultural project of domination related to the digital colonialism is that there is only one way of understanding technologies. Scholars call this epistemicide. Epistemicide because of the limited way that we can understand technologies, there be canceling other ways of conceptualizing and related to technologies. I entered these discussions about digital colonialism by Arvin. Yes, digital colonialism is a project of cultural domination that profits from people's life. Yes, our bodies are being oppressed with very material impacts. However, digital colonialism is not limited to the human, but it extends to our territories and thus to other ways of life as well. Me and Sebastian Leode proposed the figuration of terrestrial internet in the special issue towards the terrestrial internet reimagining digital networks from the ground up. This was published last year in the Journal of Tapuya, Latin American Science, Technology, and Society. With the term terrestrial internet, we want to account for the ways that internet is very material and is also a colonial project linked to the extractivism of communities, dispossession of life, and the domination of nature. When we come up with a notion of the terrestrial internet, we got inspired by two figurations. First, Latour's invitation to think about terrestrial politics, and also the figuration of internet as a territory that activists, land defenders, and human rights defenders are mobilizing in Latin America to give back materiality to internet and to politicize the increasing environmental effects. In the following slides, I will refer to these two figurations in more detail. Um, facing Gaia, eight lectures on the new climate regime, climatic regime, down to earth, the politics in the new climatic regime, critical zones, the science and politics of landing on earth. In his last three books, Bruno Latour develops the figuration of terrestrial politics to continue proposing new metaphors that account for the multiplicity of nature and culture. According to Latour, the Russian politics is made by new agents that are not passive. As we were discussing yesterday, terrestrial politics requires another law and sovereignty, posing a lot of questions about governance. Because as Latour explained, and I quote, the state cannot take the place of politics any longer. And this is the case of internet politics where borders and jurisdiction have become messy constructions produced by the unsuccessful attempts to regulate platforms. Just as the nature, culture binary, we see another binary at play 
namely the online offline binary, which produces its own problems when it comes to platforms accountability. I was inspired by Bruno Latour's figuration of terrestrial politics, in particular, his invitation to land politics on earth. And his idea is about the connection and disconnection of territories, one in which we live and one in which we depend for subsistence, but which normally remains invisible. The question relevant to our discussions here is the, the, the perspective rises is how we can land internet politics on earth. Along with the invitations to land politics on earth, in Latin America, activists and land and human rights defenders started to mobilize the figuration, the internet territory. This is to discuss the politics and social environmental issues connected to internet. The internet territory implies resistance for political purpose in different layers and fights that social collectives are undertaking. For example, the uh, maritime territory through which submarine cables pass the aerial spaces where satellite signals, drones, antennas, infrastructures are being disputed. But also the critical zones where water, energy, metals, and minerals are extracted, but where life is taking place as well. And as a result, um, this becomes the locus of social and environmental struggles. Feminist activists from Latin America proposed the figuration of body territory to render visible the violence and dispossession of women and vulnerable communities due to water, energy, and mining disputes. Um, authors point out that an electronic device can have up to 1,400 different materials. As Parikas presses, these materials are small pieces of Africa or even Latin America. And my question would be, what stories can these pieces tell about child labor, about slavery, about precarity, about dispossession or domination? Key materials for devices are metals and minerals such as lithium, gold, and silver. And these metals are, at the same time, the cause of social struggles in the global south. Electronic devices have heavy and toxic metals, such as lead, mercury, uh, PVC, among others, thereby representing high health risks for both the bodies and the territories where they are transported in form of technological waste. This map re reflects the number of social conflicts due to mining extractivism in Latin America. According to the Conflict Mining Observatory of Latin America, Mexico is one of the countries with the most mining conflicts in Latin America, followed by Peru and Chile. Lithium is a key metal that is used mostly for batteries. In Mexico in 2018, a lithium deposit was discovered in Sonora, in the north part of Mexico. In a region that already faces extended periods of drought, lithium extraction is increasing water shortages even further. As lithium extraction requires a lot of water, in addition, it causes several social problems, dispossession of land and violence. Another case that gives account of the internet connection and disconnection is the data centers. Data centers that sustain our cloud economy, the so-called new factories are very terrestrial in the sense that they intens intensively require space, water, energy, ventilation, and labor. In 2022, due to the hurricane Fiona in Puerto Rico, had power, uh, power blackouts 
but the data centers never stop having electricity. In fact, the data centers were the only places that continued to be powered in the various regions of the country, explains the cloud anthropologist Stephen Gonzalez. In this regard, we see how the vice president of economic development, business and territorial strategies for Duke Energy Carolinas, a company, refers to this. The great thing about the data center is that they run full out 24 seven with no shifts and no seasonality. It is a type of customer where the meter spins and spins at the exponential pace. It may be the most ideal customer we could have. Another case in point in our digital society is Villarrica, Paraguay. There are 60,000 inhabitants in Villarrica and 30,000 computers devoted to the production of cryptocurrencies there. Two elements make Villarrica attractive for crypto companies. First, the energy prices that are subsidized in this region, and two, the labor costs are low. The impact of these advantages are real. To produce one Bitcoin in the US costs about $30,000, and in Villarrica it costs only $13,000 to do so. But the success of these boom and extractive sectors comes at high cost produced by the ways in which scarce energy, scarce energy is being distributed and subsidized. Some of the consequences for other communities in the region are high electricity consumption that is causing power blackouts that at the same time cause household appliances to break. Also the inequality in the access to energy because of the rest of the regions do not have these prices. Just as in, in the Puerto Rican case, when there are energy blackouts in Villarrica, the data centers have a constant supply of energy and they continue producing bitcoins, but this is not the case with the surrounding communities that without energy face other social problems such as an increase of criminal activity. I will now refer to the figurations that activists from Latin America are mobilizing to fight digital colonialism. Surciendo Laboratorio de Interconectividades and Futuros Indígenas are social collectives. As a part of a research project on digital violence, I conducted a digital ethnography in Mexico City. When beginning my ethnographic research in Mexico City, I expected to hear narratives about computers, coding, or even the highest secrets of digital security in the language of computer science. However, when I met my interlocutors, the members of the feminist collectives hardly spoke about technology in those terms. Instead, they mainly spoke about bodies and territories, how their bodies were oppressed on the internet, but at the same time, how they mobilized to defend their territory. Surciendo is an organization that works in activism, communication design, free software, and culture. They also fight for the defense of human rights, land, and territory. This is how the collective Surciendo describes the figuration of internet as a territory, and I quote, the internet is a territory in dispute. When we talk about territory, it's not only the materiality of the land, but also the forms of relationships and social interrelation and with other beings. We understand the internet as a territoriality where social and affective relationships take place within this context. Not just hardware and protocols, but a complex of situations that occur in a technical environment. Understanding this territory as a part of our own life as a practice is an infrastructure that crosses 
خلاص Laboratorio de Interconectividades is a space for experimenting with new forms of cell difference and digital collective care at the intersection of art, hack feminism, and cyber feminism. For this lab, internet is a territory and hack feminism is the political project to defend that territory. The co-founder of the lab explains the strategy of linking bodies to territories as a strategy to defend the, this territory. I put my whole body on the internet because it is a possibility of multiplying collective actions and doing feminist work, having other narratives and putting content out there. Putting the body out in Spanish, acuerpamiento, means defending a political and collective cause with the body. Understood through communitarian feminism, acuerpamiento generates social cohesion. The statement from the member of the Laboratorio de Interconectividades demonstrates two elements of acuerpamiento. First, putting their body on the internet is seen as a way of creating social cohesion through collectivity. And second, creating content together is used as a political method for defending the territory of the internet by providing narratives beyond companies, advertisements and violent content for women. Futuros Indígenas, Indigenous Futures, is a network of 50 activists and land defenders inhabiting the internet as a territory to mobilize narratives for the care of the planet. In times of climatic crisis, the future is a territory to defend, according to this activist. I will quote how these activists present themselves to the public on social networks. The conversation about this planetary crisis renders our voices and our knowledge and our hopes invisible. That is why from our diversities and different geographies, we organize ourselves to hack the narratives about the climate crisis. We call the healing of the earth, the defense of life and territory. In the face of this emergency, we see the need to name the crisis from our own languages and cosmovisions to dialogue with our communities, but also to make visible the responsibility that we all have to sow the fruits. We have seen here digital colonialism is not limited to the dispossession of humans, but is extended to territories. So internet is terrestrial. How data centers and extractivism linked to digital devices are causing social problems and environmental problems in local communities, as we saw in the cases of Puerto Rico, Paraguay, and Mexico. The rest of politics, the internet territory and body territory are figurations that allow us to land the internet politics on earth and contest the binaries offline, online, connection and disconnection and at the end nature and culture. Thank you so much. <laughs>